it's Henry. Have mowers and blowers. As you know from yesterday's mother load 26 pick, I did uh, two different trades yesterday to acquire eight lawn tractors. That's a record for me. I uh, never would think that I would be able to grab eight lawn tractors a day. And the best part of that, I didn't spend one dime. No money came out of my pocket. 100% trades. So I traded my Poulon tractor, running, great engine, 16 horsepower, Briggs and Stratton single cylinder, right? Uh, that thing runs really smooth. The body wasn't as good as some of my, uh, some of my other tractors, but nevertheless, the engine just runs smooth. Uh, Mondo had a uh, bagger system for that, along with the bracket, so he's, he already has a buyer for that, so that's what he wanted. He's probably a scoop uh, 450, 500 bucks out of that deal, which is good for him. Um, while I questioned in the beginning whether or not I wanted to do the trade, because essentially this is just saving me time, right? Instead of my going out and finding a busted tractor for free, that's right, free, I figured, you know, he's bringing me seven all at once, you know? So it cuts the time out of me looking for it seven different times and whether or not I would have paid nothing or something. But you guys know I usually pay nothing. But uh, Mondo's my friend, and while the Poulon Pro, I essentially got that for free too and got it working, you know, it's just putting it together and uh, getting it running and all. Um, I also traded him my um, go-kart. Now, the go-kart, I actually did spend some money on it. Why? Because it was a uh, my wife's cruiser beach bike, mountain bike, where I bought a $99 Chinese engine, and I put it on that bike, and then some nut traded it for me. You know, So he had a go-kart. I had the you know cruiser bike with the engine on it, and we did a swap. So essentially, I paid 100 bucks for that. Um, I paid a hundred bucks for that uh, go-kart. Now, the go-kart, when I was, uh, I have a video out where my uh, brother came into town one day, and so we were, both of us, squeezed on, you know, we're, we're smaller, you know, so both of us squeezed onto the go-kart. We were zipping around the neighborhood, you know, until the left front wheel comes flying off because the uh, wheel came off the, the welds of the hub, just flew right off. So I went to Harbor Freight Tools and I bought two new um, wheels for that thing, right? And so when Mondo took it home yesterday, right? <laughs> he was riding around and uh, he got it started and he was riding around his storage area and uh, same thing happened. Uh, the hub came off the welds, flew right off. So those Harbor Freight Tools, the, the 10 inch uh, tires, junk. I, I didn't even ride it. Those are brand new tires and I didn't even ride on it. So uh, Mondo was the first guy to test those wheels, and boom, suck. So he's going to put, like, snowblower tires on there or wheels, whatever. Uh, anyway, so a lot of, um, this was one of the seven that Mondo got me, right? As you also know, yesterday, the second part of my trade was I traded the uh, um, Dayton 5,500-watt generator that I got going. I got that for free from my friends uh, Larry and I and, uh, got that going. I didn't really have any interest in it. I had it up for $500, and I put it down to $300, then I put it down to $200, and then finally some guy said, oh, I'll give you 100 bucks for it today. I'm like, okay. Never shows. So finally I just said, you know what, the hell with it. So uh, this dude, he had that um, uh, Craftsman lawn tractor. Get this. This had a 20.5 um, Kohler V-twin engine on it, and it runs. Uh, well, at least it's not blown. How's that? Uh, Carb spray was sprayed it in and it turned over. So uh, the uh, connecting rods were still attached, and that's a Kohler V twin. That's that's a good motor, you know. So uh, I traded that uh, generator for that, and so I got that over there. Uh, a lot of subscribers yesterday were commenting on how I decided that I was going to use this one for parts, and then they said, "Well, why don't you just weld the cracked frame, right?" The cracked frame is first of all, if I'm going to resell this thing, right, you're going to see that it's been cracked and it's been welded together and not to mention the fact that I wanted to show you the severity of the crack it's on both sides of the frame and structurally it is not correct if you turn the steering because of the crack right it's off by like a quarter inch or so so it's not matching up to the steering column either you know so it doesn't steer anymore the whole thing is loose and wobbly right um, Yes, I know, most of these old uh, LT4000s, right, um, are all 
rusted the crap, right? And this is in like pristine condition. I mean, there's no rust anywhere. I mean, this fender is just beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And the foot pads are beautiful. Everything looks really good. And um, some nut wanted to buy the transmission off of this for 50 bucks. So 50 bucks is 50 bucks, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna take the transmission, the wheels, transmission off, sell to him for 50 bucks. I'm gonna keep the seat, the wheels, I'm going to strip this whole thing down. I think the engine's good, too. It's a uh, flathead. Flathead 12 or 13. So I'm going to keep the engine. I'm going to keep everything. Um, actually, the deck has some rot over here, too. So it, this is it, while the fender looks great, you know, it is not in really good condition, you know, as you guys say. So um, I'm not going to try to weld that together and coincide with the steering and all that stuff. It's just... It's not worth it, seriously. It's, it's, no matter what, it's still a cube old tractor, you know what I mean? How much money can you get for it, you know? Um, I'd rather use the parts off of it, you know, and get money. 50 bucks for the tranny? Tranny's good, because it clicks, see? Click, 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 click. It's a good transmission. I'm going to show you the, um, I'm going to show you the crack, so you guys can understand what I'm trying to say. There you go. Now you guys can see the crack on the left hand side. Structurally, it, it's, it has gone to, you know, like if it was just a crack here or something like that, it'd be all right. But because it goes into the uh, 90 degree turn, there's the structural damage to it, see? So to even bend this gauge steel back to where it was and to weld it, it would take quite a bit, you know? As you can see, the uh, the axle is, bent at a corner uh, at a and at an angle now so it's not straight vertical it's uh, somewhat um, bent so that's the that's the extent of the crack here let's take you to the other side here I'm going to try to get you you see that that's really bad I just moved the tractor a little bit so I can get in here and let you guys really see it. Yeah. I am not going to try to repair that. This frame is done ski. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take this entire tractor apart into pieces, right? Uh, I've got a nut who wants to buy the transmission. 50 bucks is 50 bucks. 50 bucks is two new batteries from Walmart. I will say, the tractor is in really good condition. I'm going to keep this bracket. I'm going to need this seat. Ooh. Free starting fluid. SCORES! I mean, I need this seat because I might go and try to make that red tractor into something later. You see what I mean? I could use the seat for this, but I still don't have a deck though. So just for the hell of it, I've got my, uh, radio flyer there that I had the generator on. Well, now that I got rid of the generator, I've got the radio flyer there. I got my tools in there. I got a crate. I got a uh, um, floor mats from a car so that I could take off the, I'm going to take off this deck, see, and then I'm going to put it on its side, which will allow me to take the transmission off very easily. Let's see if I can just do this in the field without going through too much trouble.
As you guys saw, it was very easy to remove the transmission. This transmission is in excellent condition, and uh, I'm going to show you why. So the shifts are very smooth. Click, click, click. Very easy to shift. Very crisp clicks. Okay. It's reverse. As you can see, it's moving. All right, this is neutral. Doesn't move. First gear. Second gear. Third gear. Fifth gear. Much faster. See? Very good transmission. Now also, you guys were saying how uh, I should try to fix it because of the frame. No, sir. Just from moving the tractor to its side, left and right, the whole front end just broke right off. Just broke right off. It was the entire front end bracket completely off. Just came right off. So there was no fixing this. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but who wants to? Deck and hood was pretty easy to remove. I uh, just leave this stuff here until I'm done with my next project. I just wanted to get the tranny off to sell. Because I have to leave this stuff here and not mess with it yet. Because I have this to work on today. I'm going to try to see if I can unlock the engine because it seems to be locked up. I'm trying to unlock the engine and see if we can get this thing started today. What do you think, huh? You know, from yesterday, I turned this thing, right? And it was like, when you turned it, 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 it maybe a quarter away, it, you heard clanking, clanking. And that was the uh, mower deck pulley fused to the bottom of the double stack pulley to the crankshaft, right? And so I just... Uh, Loosen the belt by putting the brake down for the drive, right? And took the mower deck belt and just kind of moved it around and it's now not fused onto the pulley. So check this out. It actually moves freely now and compression, which means that the connecting rod is connected. Right there. So it's got compression. And check the, just check the oil. It's blacker than death. Okay, uh, but it has no battery, so we can't even test this without a battery. That's what I'm going to do now is uh, put a battery in. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I actually have one. Mondo gave me one that's, uh, that I put a multimeter to. It showed uh, 12.67. That's good. So I'm going to put a battery in. So we've got a battery in. Let's give her a crank and see if it works. So it's got oil. Gonna crank it. Let's see. Nothing. We have to sit on it. They sit on it, Fonz. Nothing. PTO is off. Light is off. Fucking brake is on. It's in neutral. Nothing. Not other one. I guess I should have checked the fuse before I put the battery in, huh? So MTD makes their tractors where they shove the solenoid back here, underneath the uh, battery cover. So how are you supposed to jump it if you got the battery in the way? You know what I mean? Stupid! Anyway, so I took the battery out. It's hanging there. I'm going to try to finagle my hand in here and see if I can jump it. Zzz. I can't see, you see? I can't see. You can't see. That's right, I can't see. So if I can't see, how am I supposed to find the two terminals, damn it? MTD. Yeah, yeah, I totally can't find it. I have no idea where it is. Increase the chance of me electrocuting myself. Screwing around with this damn thing. 
You can't if you can't do the if you can't jump the solenoid, you can't tell if the engine works or not. So I guess I could put a, a, a battery to the uh, starter directly. I guess I could do that. I guess I'll have to do that. All right, so uh, I got the battery charger plugged in, right? Got the positive on the starter terminal. I'm just gonna touch this negative on the bottom part of the starter and see if it cranks. Okay, so it cranks, we know the starter works. Gonna have to do some more testing when it comes to the uh, solenoid. Looks like I might have to replace the solenoid. I might have to take the solenoid out. Okay, so I want to rule out the uh, solenoid. So I was able to take this uh, channel lock and just touch both terminals together and it did crank. But I want to test and see whether or not it's the safety switches or if the solenoid is bad. So what I did was, I got this jumper wire, right? The other end is on the trigger tab of the four post solenoid. I felt around, of course I can't see it, but I felt around and I could feel the negative and the positive uh, tabs on the solenoid. So it's a four post solenoid. It doesn't need to be grounded through the frame, but rather it's a ground wire going straight to it. So I have this, I pulled the uh, trigger wire off, connected my own wire, and now I'm just gonna touch this uh, positive ground, uh, positive uh, 12 volts on the battery and see if it cranks. If it cranks, we know that the solenoid is fine and that it's uh, one of the safety switches that's preventing it from starting. So as you can see, it cranks. It's the, uh, it, there's nothing wrong with the solenoid. It's the trigger wire from the ignition is not sending 12 volts to the trigger wire because one, two, or all three of the uh, safety switches are busted. So I am going to take a uh, wire and go straight to the ignition switch where it says solenoid on it. I've run a wire, my own wire, directly to the trigger part of that tab on the solenoid. Now I've run that wire underneath the tractor and it's this red wire here sticking out. I took the ignition switch out and now I'm gonna look for the S that's labeled on this ignition switch. S stands for solenoid or starter. I've taken a toothbrush to get rid of all the spits on here. As you can see, the S is labeled on this one right here. So if this harness was attached onto the switch, right, it would coincide with this one right here which is the orange colored one. So here's the orange colored one. This is the solenoid tab. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this orange one from the harness. And this essentially bypasses all my safety switches. I know, but I'm not gonna go through hell figuring out which one of the three or all of them are busted. So I have cut the orange, this is the trigger wire from the ignition switch, cut the orange one from the harness. Now I'm going to connect it to my own wire here that's connected directly to the uh, um, trigger tab on the solenoid. So now, when I turn this key, it should crank. There we go. No matter what happens, I'm going to be able to start this tractor because it's directly to the solenoid and it does not go through any safety switches. Taped it up, 
disconnect the wiring harness again, pop the ignition switch back in here again. I want to make sure I don't put it in upside down. Come on, bro. There we go. And reattach the harness back on here to the switch. Took that in like a hemorrhoid. And let's turn the switch and see if it cranks. Ha ha, there you go, fixed. Now let's see if the engine turns over. Let's remove the air box uh, for the air filter and shoot some starting fluid in. Okay, we're on the left side here. Let's remove this air box. I could just shoot it in here. This goes into the carburetor. Now, uh, this does have gas, but it's total ass gas. Total. I've got my free starting fluid here that I found inside the battery box in there. Let's see if it starts up. It's on choke. Yeah, bet, baby, bet. So we know it starts up. Awesome. Um, it's not getting any um, fuel into the carburetor because of, look at that fuel solenoid under there. It's got a fuel solenoid. So if we have uh, safety switch issues, right, maybe that uh, valve is not opening on the fuel solenoid. I'm going to have to check that out. But uh, right now, I'm going to button that stuff up. So I know what you guys are saying. Some of you shop owners are thinking, well, Henry, uh, you've disabled the safety switches, the seat safety switch, the brake safety switch, as well as the PTO safety switch. That's not safe for people to use. And it says, well, I know, but I'm not a shop. I'm a flipper. My purpose is to get machines running. And if people come and look at it, and I tell them that there's no safety switches, as long as they want it, they buy it. If they don't want it, they don't have to buy it. They can go to a shop and get ones that have safety switches that work. But uh, 9 out of 10 times, people don't care. As long as the engine runs, they'll buy it. So that's my purpose here, is to get the machine running. I don't care to have it uh, like stock. I mean, I'd like to keep it a stock, but I'm not going to spend another day or so trying to research which one of these circuits on the brake, PTO, or seat switch is busted to not complete the circuit. You follow what I'm saying? It's all about getting them running, getting them going. As long as the engine starts, the machine runs and mows and drives, this is the purpose of it, okay? Is to flip them. I get them, you get them running, out the door it goes, you sell them, that's it. But if I was a shop, yes, I would do everything according to the specs and uh, as if I was reselling this thing out of Home Depot or something. But I'm not, so I won't. Purpose is to get it running. So look, um, I just put my hand on the solenoid. I turned the switch to the on position. I did not hear it click. So I don't believe this fuel solenoid is working. What a surprise! This is why I don't like the fuel solenoids. But Henry, it'll backfire. Then throttle down before you shut it off. Problem fixed. So the fuel solenoids are a pain in the butt. I cut all of them if they're not working. So this is a uh, wrench that is so thin that you can get it in between the fuel solenoid and the, and the bowl. I'm going to disconnect this wire. This is the wire, a uh, positive switched current with a black ground to the um, black ground to the engine block. I'm taking off the fuel solenoid and look, it is dripping of fuel continuously. So I know that it's working. The fuel is dripping in there and stinks like really stale gas. And look, guys, I've had people who tell me, oh, Henry, 
I never have a problem with mine. Well, this appears to be seized and stuck. It doesn't move. Man, that, that's really coming down. So I know that the, I know that the carburetor, is, I mean, it, it is, um, it does have fuel in it, but I need to clamp this off right now. And I can't walk away. Walk away, baby, walk away. You know what? I'm gonna just screw this back on again real quick. Holy cow. Why isn't this allowing me to screw this in? There we go. Okay, I've got a clamp now. I'm gonna clamp off the fuel. And I'm gonna remove this again. The ass gas will come back out, but that's it. Stop. Still flowing. I don't know why it keeps coming out. There we go. All right, now it stopped. So look, now I'm going to hook this back up to here again, turn the switch, and see if the valve moves in and out. I don't think it'll move in and out. Let's see. No, see, I'm turning the switch on and off and it does not work. Oh, it moves a little, but not a lot. It moves a little bit. So this is the cause of why it's not getting any gas. At least we know this circuit works. So, guess what I'm gonna do? Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. Cutting the valve and bypassing safety switches. Basically, this should be labeled what not to do to properly fix a lawnmower. There you go, the unconventional way of doing things. Cut the valve, bypass safety switches. Yeah, that Henry, he likes to do stuff like that. But you know what? His tractors run. <laughs> That's right, my tractors do run. So there you go. I'm gonna just screw this back on again real quick. And I'm not even gonna tighten it. I'm gonna let the fuel flow through it. And let's see if it stays running. I'm, I didn't even clean the carb. But what poured out of there was just ass gas, really bad. But um, let's see if it'll stay running, you never know. You never know. I'm gonna give it a start. It's, it should be filling up, filling up with fuel. Got it on choke, I'm gonna crank it. Ooh.
broke the fuel mixture screw like an asshole. Not bad, not bad at all, man. Um, I was trying to pull off this black little cover off the fuel mixture screw and I pulled it too hard and it broke it, you know? So I'm not gonna be able to adjust the fuel mixture on this now, like an idiot. I've got, I've got a little bit of a fire going on in the front here. It's uh, the heat of the muffler on some dried grass, you know? Um, I think I should put that out. Should I put that out? Yes, Henry, you're gonna create a fire. You should put that out. Yeah, some dried grass in there just stuck. And so the heat of the muffler is causing it to uh, catch on fire. That's okay, a little fire never hurt anybody, as long as you have it under control. So uh, I'm gonna remove this carburetor and see how bad it is. So with this model um, engine, right, um, to take the carburetor off, it's kind of a pain. Um, gotta take this shroud off the top because it has this, uh, filter intake that is on here and once you pull that off you can't get it off unless you take the cover off it's a pain in the butt but you know it gives me a chance to take a look inside underneath the cover and see uh, what's up anyway you know Let's see what's up there's a there you go it's not bad I was expecting a, a mouse nest but I don't see one which is pretty cool So to get the two studs out, let's uh, stop the fuel in case it co goes crazy, right? Quarter inch to loosen these studs over here. This is a Nikki carb, by the way. I think I might have some other Nikki's that I could use um, since I broke the fuel adjustment screw here. Uh, sometimes it surges, as you can, guys can see, it, it surges. Sometimes if you just clean the carb, it won't surge, but more than likely it'll still surge because I broke the fuel mixture screw, so I won't be able to dial it in, you know? So I'm gonna use this probably for parts, maybe find another carburetor. Let's see how dirty it is first before I jump to conclusions and start doing all that, you know? So here's the choke lever, comes off just like that. that throttle and this little small tiny tensioner wire. Don't break it, Henry. Okay. See? I didn't break it. Um so you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off too. So you can see that there's a fuel uh, oil filter there. My friend Samuel Sandoval just bought me four of them. I don't know if it fits this, but I think they're all the same diameter. And there it is. Here is the Nikki Carb. Let's. Um, Take this bowl off and see the condition of the inside. So yeah, so the the Nikki one, it's you got this valve here, solenoid valve that screws in, but it doesn't screw into the emulsion tube like most carburetors, or it doesn't lead there. It has two separate flathead or Phillips screws that hold the bowl onto it. Okay, let's see what this looks like here. 
it's not terrible. I mean, you could tell it's ass gas, you know what I mean? But it's not really terribly dirty, surprisingly. This either. If only I didn't break the air fuel, fuel mixture, you know? Let me go look for another carburetor and see if uh, I have one. <laughs> so uh, I just went to my bin of carburetors and opened it. First thing I pulled out was this. This is a Chinese Nikki carb that's a copy, Chinese copy. And uh, I don't remember where I got it from. I have so many. But look, it's got the fuel mixture here. You blow. You can blow through it. You flip it upside down so that the bowl, not the bowl, the float is pushing down on the needle and closing the valve. And you cannot blow. So I think the innards are fine, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do that, you know. You've got the fuel extra thing and fuel mixture screw here so I can dial it in. You've got the idling screw. The choke closes and springs back open. Throttle opens and closes as it should. So, I mean, I don't remember where I got it from, but you know what? <laughs> oh, what's good about this? Because it's a Chinese copy, they know exactly what I know. Get rid of that fuel solenoid, see? So they make them without it. This is awesome. So you know what, instead of trying to clean this and whatever, drill that out, I'm gonna just use this. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use this gasket over here. I'm gonna need this gasket. Don't break the gasket, Henry. I'll try not to. Ah, came right off. That's good, Henry. So, let's just try this one. I'm not going to put that other one back because I broke the fuel mixture screw. That's very important, especially if you have a carburetor that surges. Now, if your carburetor doesn't surge, then you wouldn't worry about it. But mine does, so I'm going to worry about it. And if it surges, that's no good. No good. Oh, my God. It's like a needle in a haystack kind of a thing, you know? And you dropped the gasket. Thank you. All right, got it in there. There's a choke linkage. Bottom up hook. Last hole. Stick it into this canal there. That's what she said. Stick the studs in. You stick a stud in, Henry. I'm sticking a stud in. Stop talking dirty. I'm not talking dirty, Henry. Yes, you are. Henry, are you talking to yourself? Yes, I am. What's up, Scott? Um, yes, sir. Uh, I think things are getting better only because I think because South Korea and China seem to have it kind of dialed in now. I mean, they're testing 20,000 people a day. You know what I mean? How many are we testing? How many have we totally tested? 1,500? Nationwide? I'm telling you, man. We're the most modern country in the world, and yet we're behind, you know? Oh, boy. Ryan is home. So uh, that was my neighbor, Scott. Um, his wife has cancer, as you guys know from my last episode. Uh, so, you know, he comes by every day walking his dog and uh, wants to talk about what's the goings-ons around the world, you know, which uh, everybody, I know, I'm sure it's like that with you guys too, but, you know, you go and walk around and you talk to your friends and stuff. You got to talk about the coronavirus, you know. But anyway, so look, um, I got the uh, carburetor on here. Remember, I just pulled it out of a drawer. I didn't even open it, but uh, it seems to function as it should. And so I'm just going to give her a crank and see what happens.
So this is a uh, full idle. I'm going to shut it off because I don't want to run it um, too hard and too uh, long without the cover on. Uh, you will have it overheat. So uh, there are thing, a few things I could do. A, I could try another carburetor, right? B, as you saw, when I uh, used my hand and closed the choke a little bit more, it ran very well. So which means that if you decrease the amount of air going in, right, it'll run better. Meaning that um, you're getting too much air, not enough fuel is what it is. So when you decrease the air, you're balancing the ratio of the air-fuel mixture that allows it to run nicely, right? So when you had it open like that, it's too much air mixing with the fuel, which means it's not enough fuel getting to that. Because this is a 20 horsepower um, machine, right? This may be designed for just a 13 horsepower, right? Something like that. So if I change the carburetor to a wall bro, or maybe drilled out the jets, it might be better. Or I felt that if I pushed a little bit here on the throttle, it would run a little bit better. Because if you look at this tension spring wire here, right? You know, a lot of people say that that does nothing. But believe me, it does do something. And it's, it's very loose, you know? So it's been stretched over, over time. So what if I just, what if I just tighten this a little bit more? What if I push it down like an inch, right? What if I push this down a little bit and uh, pull the wire longer? Like bend it about half an inch more, you know, to make the make the tension tighter on it. Will that help a little bit? I think it might. Yeah, so I'm going to look for another carburetor, maybe an original Walboro, and see if that works out a little bit better. So I couldn't find a uh, Walboro one, right? But I did find an original Nikki. okay? This is an original Nikki, and it still has the fuel solenoid on. And I tested the fuel solenoid, and this one actually works. So I'm going to connect it, believe it or not. And so when I connect it, it actually clicks in and out. Yep, I hear it, see? So, I don't know what condition this is, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. This is my third carburetor. Oh, that's right. Um, usually, engines run on fuel. Now this is going to be strange because the uh, hose is designed differently. See what I mean? So I don't know if that'll work. Maybe it'll work. I'm not 
true. Let's give it a try anyway. Man, does that sound great or what? That sounds like awesome, you know? That sounds great. sounds wonderful see see what a difference a carburetor makes man so this was an original nikki right and it it runs great i didn't have to adjust anything over here you know uh fuel solenoids on here i'm pretty surprised it works very well uh so uh that, that's it that's great um engine runs great um i'm gonna put everything back again So I uh, just put everything together now. Engine's all settled. I shortened the fuel line and did a straight hose right into it because this Nikki original has a 90 degree angle instead of it going like that. So it's shorter now for the better for the gravity feed it sounds great now sounds fantastic this engine this engine now runs, runs really well too. Starts, runs, shuts off. That's great. We bypassed all the safety switches, ran a live wire directly from the S tab on the ignition switch directly to the trigger tab on the solenoid. Solenoid was good. Uh, engine starts, changed three carburetors. We settled on the third one, which was the original Nikki with the fuel solenoid on there. Runs great. Uh, that Nikki fuel solenoid, uh, that Nikki uh, carburetor was probably designed for 17.5 horsepower and higher. Uh, the other one that I had on was probably for 15 horsepower and lower. So the holes are drilled out a little bit differently in diameter. So uh, this one, as you can see, runs great for this uh, horsepower. I shortened the uh, fuel line. So instead of the curved one that goes into a straight um, input, right? It's a straight shot right into a curved input. So, uh, and we also shortened the line so that it, uh, for a gravity feed, it, it goes right in there. Uh, this actually has a fuel solenoid on it that works. So I'll keep it on here for now. Uh, tractor is filthy dirty. Um, and I don't know if this deck is gonna work. It feels a little hinky. When I'm turning the blades on the bottom and stuff, it just uh, seems like it gets caught and stuff. So I'm, I'm I, I have a feeling I might have to take off the, the mower deck and inspect it before I give it a try. But uh, I'm going to replace uh, the, uh, one of the wheels on the right side because that one's off its uh, bead. And um, we'll see if it moves forward and backwards. And then I'll remove the deck and address that. But uh, how about that, huh? A lot of progress on this uh, Yard Machines CVT 20 horsepower Briggs um, overhead valve engine. Got it started today. And uh, that nut is going to come and buy that uh, transmission for 50 bucks.
Okay, I wound up picking up another one from Jersey, from Jersey a while back. Yeah. Took took mine all apart, put it all together, put it in there, went to go shift it. It's like, oh, no. See how smooth those yeah, crisp was, shifts are, yeah, man? It was, it's awesome. It wasn't even any. Mine, like, I'm stuck here. I'm like, and the thing is, on. I've taken that thing apart too. It's so difficult to get to roll. You almost have to re grease all the bearings. Yep, inside. you have to re grease everything. It's a pain and then in the balls. The, pin, the balls that are in here. Underneath that spring, those are a nightmare to get out. Well, you saw what machine I took it off of. Yes. It's like pristine. Yeah, same exact one that I have the right now. The reason why I'm not fixing that one is because it's, uh... It's, the, the frame was cracked. The frame was cracked, man. Badly, too, you know? Scores! Um, oh, by the way, I sold that damn edger. The edger that uh, Jason gave me, the one that I bought the $10 carburetor, I just fixed it yesterday, whatever. I put it online for one thirty-five. Guy came over and bought it. One thirty-five, full price. I was gonna throw that to the curb too. Can you believe that? I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Also follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website.